The first example we'll work with is using the full BGP table from both upstream providers. Let's have a look at the diagram. We're on AS100, and we want to multi-home between the two, AS130 and AS140, and we want to receive routes from both upstreams and try and balance outbound traffic. So if we send our aggregate towards AS130, AS130's customers will see that aggregate. So traffic from AS130's customers to AS100 will follow the green arrow into AS100. So if incoming traffic goes that way, we would want outgoing traffic to follow the return path. We don't really want it to go router D through AS140, through the whole worldwide internet, through the transit provider of AS130, back to AS130's customers. That's a long way around. What we want is return traffic from AS100 to customer 5 to go back through the direct link to AS130. For this, we need to get routing information about AS130 and its customers from AS130. So let's look at the Router C configuration. We've asked AS130 to send us the full BGP table. Now, the full BGP table doesn't mean accept any old thing coming from the upstream. We should actually filter what we hear from them to allow all prefixes apart from special use and basically the non-routable prefixes. The example shows IPv4. There's a similar set for an IPv6 full route BGP session. Outbound, we only send our aggregate. The example also shows a route map called AS130 load share. That's not built into the router. That's actually something we have to configure. And we show a potential example for AS130 on this slide. The AS130 load share route map looks for prefixes matching AS path list 10. And AS path list 10 basically has two entries. The first one saying anything originated by AS130, and that's AS130 with prepends of 130, or any prefix originated by 130 and 130's immediate neighbors. So if, say, customer 5 is using BGP, their AS would match the second line of that access list 10. And this also would match prefix originated by AS130's transit provider. So we've matched prefixes, and what we're going to do is set local preference to 120. If the prefixes do not match this AS path, then we move on to the second line. And the second line says any prefixes we learn from AS130 should be set local preference 80. So we're making this path unimportant. So in summary, prefixes originated by AS130 and AS130's immediate neighboring ASs will be set with local preference 120. And everything else will be set local preference 80. So this is saying traffic to AS130 and its immediate neighbor should go out through router C. Everything else will go out through router D. Let's look at router D's configuration. Again, we're getting the full BGP table from AS140 upstream and we're filtering what's coming in to make sure that RFC 6890 prefixes and their friends are not permitted into the network. That's the special use prefix list. Outbound, we send just our aggregate. So the summary of all this is router C will accept full routes from 130, tag prefixes originated by 130 and 130's neighboring ASs with local preference 120 traffic to those ASs will go over the 130 link. The remaining prefixes are tagged with local preference 80, and traffic to all other ASs will go over the link to AS140. The router D configuration is the same as that for router C, but without the route map setting the preferences, which means all prefixes coming in from router D will stay with the local preference default value of 100. So let's summarize this in a table, because this table will be useful when we look at the next example, looking at partial routes. 
At the time of recording, the full BGP table was about 650,000 prefixes. And so 650,000 prefixes coming from AS140, tagged with local preference 100. AS130, well, let's say we had 30,000 prefixes coming from 130 and 130's immediate neighbors. And we've tagged those with local preference 120. The remaining 620,000 will be tagged with local preference 80. We have a grand total of 1.3 million paths as received by the two routers. So full routes from both upstreams is actually quite expensive. It needs lots of memory and CPU. We need to set local preferences, at least on the peering with one upstream, and we need to work out which prefixes we want to set local preference on. And this is only an example. Real life will need improved fine tuning. It very much depends on the connectivity between the upstreams, their customers, who their transit providers are, and the rest of the internet. And of course, the previous example doesn't consider inbound traffic, but we've covered that in earlier examples.